Welcome, everybody. I've got some colossal buffs for Nido Queen. Nido Queen, Nido King will be a separate video. However, Nido Queen and Nido King are both now semi pseudo legendaries in this ROM hack. I call them semi pseudos. They, uh, the three stage ones at least, follow the same stat total trend of 335, 455, and 575. There are tons of other 575 based stat total Pokemon in this hack. And regardless of the base stat total of the Pokemon, all Pokemon are balanced for, you know, perfect viability from beginning to end. Uh, and it's just, uh, it's really, really cool and a really good fun time. So do make sure that you check out that Google Sheet in the description to look at all the other Pokemon buffs and changes. But most importantly, check that out to look at all the move buffs and changes. There are 600 plus of them. And as you see right here on screen, if you click this little link here on the bottom, it says search all moves here. You can check out all the 600 plus move buffs and changes organized into several different categories that you can click as you can see on screen right here. If you click them, it'll take you right there. Priority moves right here. Requel moves right here, whatever it is, and there's just tons of them. So yeah, do give those a look. I don't have time to get into them all in this video. As for Needle Queen, though, awesome bus. I did differentiate it a lot from Needle King. Needle King being a lot more offensive in the abilities. Uh, their stats are similar, but still different. Uh, Needle King has 10 more speed uh, and 10 less. Basically, Needle King has 10 more speed in attack, while Needle Queen has 10 more defenses. Um, they both have the same HP and special attack, though. They are no longer mixed attackers, and they lost sheer force. Uh, Needle King has two, in my opinion, better and more fun abilities that are buffed in this hack, uh, which I'll get into in the Needle King video. But as for Needle Queen, it's always I've always wanted it to be more defensive, anyways, because otherwise it's just worse Needle King or bulkier, slower Needle King, which is like boring as hell. Um, I don't like how similar they were. So these two, with these new ability changes and the stat, you know, distribution, they are much different from one another now, and I love that. Very, very cool. So Molt Scale and Intimidate, very, very fitting abilities for Needle Queen uh, in terms of being not only just defensive, but also fitting her vibe. Um, if you go to the Pokedex, it talks about the hard scales that cover its strong body, serve as excellent protection from any attack. If it's hard scales provide strong protection, tough scales cover the sturdy body of this Pokemon, and its scales grow in cycles. Literally, like, 90% of these Pokedex entries talk about scales. It also says it uses it's, oh my god, I'm talking way too quick. It also says that it uses its hefty bulk to execute powerful moves and all this other stuff. So you know, Nino Queen can still pack a big punch, so it has a great attack stat. Nothing too crazy with this ROM hack standard, especially without a boosting ability, but it can use uh, multi scale in an offensive way, not only a defensive way. However, multi scale is especially good with the black sludge buff. Um, very, very fun. It heals you by 12%, so with Baneful Bunker, uh, even on Need Arena, you can get 24 HP percent percentage per turn or per every two turns, and it's really, really strong uh, and really fun. Keep in mind that stuff like First Impression and a couple other crit moves will bypass through Protect, but it's still a very reliable way. I just spit, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> a very reliable way <laughs> to um, heal yourself without needing to teach Slack Off. Not that Slack Off is bad, but you don't have reteachable uh, level up moves until the end of the game, so you will have to rely on TMs and tutors to reteach options. Meanwhile, you know, you do have rest and sleep call, but um, for healing, you would have to keep Slack Off, which can be a bit of a burden. You know, you, you do want other moves sometimes. So if you do end up having to delete, having to delete Slack Off, you always will have Black Sludge. Uh, which is nice. You also have Stockpile and Swallow. Buff Swallow heals you by 100% HP and is priority, so that's a good healing option now as well. Um, in general, these guys are great utility. Needle Queen is really strong as well. Like, it can still run, you know, offensive scarf sets for certain boss fights just to outspeed things and kill them. Um, Molten Scale Dragon Dance late game is very strong. Um, like, very, very strong. Let me actually make DD. DD should be Needle Queen only. It feels kind of smelly to be on. Needle, Needle Queen on for some reason to me. Gotta call it these in real quick. Um, so, yeah, it's just so strong with these abilities. What the hell did I just do? I am so bad at multitasking, if you can't tell. Um, the pre evolutions, I can talk about why I changed their typing. So, number one, I just think it's a cool, unique type combination. There are two other poison normal types, I believe. Uh, there is Furfru, and then there is well, one, of the, one of the Furfru forms. The, the, I forget what the one is called. But there's Furfru, and then there is um, Licky Licky and the Katal. So it's not like a super unique type combo, but it's cool. It gives them dual stab, gives them a ghost immunity. They do lose a uh, fighting type resistance, but I think that's worth it um, for that ghost immunity and for the dual stab because they are pretty strong. It's more worth it on Nido uh, Reno because he's a lot more offensive and he gets like hustle quick attack and other fun stuff. But Nido Reno, it's not, I mean, you could argue it's worse because you lose that resistance, but you still gain immunity, so it's not terrible. And it's not like it's weak. 92 base attack is still pretty good. Um, you're pretty quick. Uh, the Nido middle forms are viable with a Violite, not like, most of the semi-pseudo middle stages, no, all of the semi-pseudo middle stages are a Violite viable, um, meaning they evolve with a gem, so you can potentially keep it instead of having to evolve. But the Nidos, especially Nidorina, is probably the least 
one of the least viable ones in terms of the evolution, like maybe alongside Pupitar and stuff, just because of the nature of like their abilities and stat distribution and just what the evolution's abilities are. Not that Ruskin is bad, like oh, I like Ruskin is cool and all, but uh, I would only ever wait to evolve if like I really needed a uh, normal type on my team for a certain. Maybe like for example, for Total Mimikyu, you do have a ghost immunity, so you can make an argument that Nidorina is better for Mimikyu. An argument, I wouldn't say it's necessarily because you have intimidated multi scale and held that in freedom on Nido Queen while Nidorina would have to hold a violate most likely. Not that it's frail without it, it's pretty damn tanky without it, uh, but with with a violate it is very tanky, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, good dual stab, poison normal, nice little combo right there, you have all types of great coverage. Poison round is obviously very, very strong uh, dual stab that we all know, very cool little combo with all the buffed moves and whatnot. Um, as you can see by level up there are tons of move changes, so just give those a look, but there are tons of cool, powerful stab options, uh, you know, poison tail, and, uh, Gunk Shot and Headlong Rush and Precipice Blades and all that other good stuff. But honestly, for Nino Queen, I would probably most likely run more reliable stab options and use it as more of like a defensive utility Pokemon with like Intimidate and Parting Shot or Multiscale Black Sludge or anything like that. It's such a good tanky mon. It can just come in, kill things, and switch out and also deal with offensive threats at the same time. Uh, poison Ground has always had really good resistances. Uh, it has a decent amount of weaknesses, but it's also resistant four times to poison, and then it resists fighting, fairy, rock, and bug. That bug resistance, especially being very valuable in this hack when first impression is literally everywhere, and all types of other powerful bug type moves are everywhere, and less things resist bug now. Uh, you also have electric immunity, and then you are weak to water, psychic, ice, and ground, so not bad at all. Only four weaknesses, relatively common ones, but still not bad at all. And of course, with intimidate remote skill, you can swallow. Um, Super effective attacks, you know, 90, 128, 90 bulk with Intimidate and Molten Scale is beautiful. So tanky. Such a fun Pokemon. This would be an absolute blast to use. Um, the Nidos in general are super sick. I love them. And they were always, they always felt extremely underpowered to me. So I really like the fact that they are now more, uh, just overall more viable. Like they're just really strong and also bulky and have all types of really cool things that they can do. Nid Arena, viable up until level 40 for sure. Won't be a problem getting it to level 40 at all. Um, you know, it is pretty tanky. Maybe like, uh, you know, if you have other Valet Pokemon, it might be kind of a burden, but like, that's just the nature of being a semi-pseudo. You do have to evolve at 20 and 40. Um, yeah, that's really about it. I mean, you got Spike Shield early game, you have stuff like Bar Barrage, which always poisons. Poison Touch is not the most useful uh, ability. I actually tend to really dislike luck-based abilities like this, especially in a ROM hack like this, where everything is like, like you're gonna need a lot of strategy. I feel like banking on luck-based abilities is not ideal, uh, but Poison Touch is fitting flavor-wise and it's not staying the whole evolutionary line. That's why I kept it. Um, poison Point is also, I, I, I just like Poison Point even more than Poison Touch, because the Poison Touch, you can at least uh, farm for Poison Touch hits with like multi-hit moves. For example, uh, pin, well, pin Missile's not contact, neither is Spike Cannon, but Fury Swipes, Fury Swipes would uh, have several chances to do that, as well as Double Kick, which is actually a good coverage move for early game now. 70 base power overall, 35 base power for each kick. Um, all types of other really fun things you can get, by the way, like, I'm not even gonna bother covering them all, but you have all the fangs and all the punches and all these other crazy ass coverage moves and powerful level up and TM and Tutor moves that you can see what these now do in the description below. Um, other utility, Battle Cry, beautiful, absolute staple on Needle Queen in my opinion. Uh, Battle Cry drops attack and special attack by two. You can use that in conjunction with Parting Shot and you can just absolutely neuter whatever's in front of you. And you also have strong priority options in Poison Dart, First Impression, and you also can use both Quick Claw to outspeed certain things or Choice Scarf, like I said earlier, with 81 base speed. It's not like it's slow at all um, because I do see them like, you know, running around decently quickly. Um, yeah, Dragon Dance multi scale late game is really strong, but keep in mind that setup is nerfed. However, uh, despite only having two Dragon Dances and, um, you know, there being priority heart swap and Toxic Turvy and all this other stuff running around, you can still get some sweeps going late game potentially because of your very good defensive typing that also resists first impression and the fact that you can heal with Black Sludge without having to do anything. You know, you can just click DD with multi scale, protect Black Sludge, and you can just go to town. Um, or anything else really. You can even use Slack Off if you did keep Slack Off, but. You know, you don't have to keep Slack off on uh, Nido Arena if you don't want to. I would say it's still worth using, but not, not like a staple. Um, it's still great though. I mean, you can replenish them with the skill even easier with Slack off and then Intimidate. Uh, Slack off is also great. It's just a great defensive check to so many things in a hack. It's such a fun, strong Pokemon. So yeah, I think I'll leave the video off there. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed it. There's a couple other things I could cover, but I hopefully, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust that you can check out the Google Sheet and look at the other move-ups and changes and see down below what you think. Also, let me remove agility. That feels kind of weird. Yeah, I don't like agility on that. I'll remove that. I'll fix this formatting later. 
Okay, now it's an actual, we're good. So, yeah, um, that's about it. Thanks for listening. And I'll be back for a Nido Kings video coming up. See ya.